Okay, thank you for invitation. Thank you for invitation. And I'd like thanks to Professor Hong Wing for his kind hosp hospitability. Uh, today, I will talk about my recent work with Shan Kim about the paired regularity or the Boltzmann equation passed on convex obstacle. Uh, I think many of you already, there are many of you, uh, experts in the Boltzmann equation, but I will briefly explain the, what Boltzmann equation says. The Boltzmann equation is a mathematical model for collisional rarefied gas derived by the famous physicists, Maxwell and Boltzmann. So this is a partial differential equation for probability density function, say capital F, which is defined on time and space and velocity. And it is balanced equation between free transport of F and collision operate on the right-hand side. If we don't have any collision effect, we just give zero on the right-hand side and it, it just become the free transport. Of course, we can add some ex extra force terms like a plus of Boston Boston Boltzmann equation plus of Maxwell equation, but here I will only consider just pure plus of Boltzmann equation. There are many frameworks to analyze this equation, but today we will mainly use the uh, characteristic of TXV. So I will introduce capital X notation and capital V notation. The capital X notation says when small t, small x, small v are fixed, capital X of S at TXV says position of a particle, which was at TXV, and we want to measure the position of the particle at time S, okay? And the capital V similarly says the velocity of the particle, which was at TXV at time S. So simply speaking, we want to fix the particle instead of the position. That means we want to transform from Eulerian to Lagrangian, right? So this is very standard idea, which is also widely used in fluid dynamics, right? So the easiest way of understanding the free transport is uh, once we read the free transport along the characteristic, we can easily gain the simple Hamiltonian structure. That means if we, when Tx is fixed, If you take derivatives with respect to time s, then we get just velocity. And since we assume there are no force, the s d over dS capital V just becomes zero. And what free transport says, we, we just measure the rate of change of probability density function along the time s, I mean along the fixed, fixed particle, which was at Tx2. And now let's briefly explain the uh, how collision operator Q of F and F looks like. So in Boltzmann theory, in, in standard Boltzmann theory, we usually consider binary elastic collision. Of course, there are. I heard that recently there are some guys who are working on the uh, triple collision, or some guys are working on the inelastic, but the I think many guys are working on elastic binary collision. So consider two same particle collide. One particle has velocity u and another has velocity v. So this is pre-collision velocity. And after collision, we have u prime and v prime. Since this collision is elastic, we can assume two conservation law, moment conservation, and energy conservation, but there are still gap because energy conservation gives R1 condition and momentum conservation gives condition in R3. But assume that the pre-collision U and V are given. What we have to do is we have to determine U prime V prime in terms of U and V. We think it is a deterministic if we consider just billiard. But in the billiard, the thing is that when you have a size of the ball, it is deterministic. But in the theory, we assume that the size of the ball is just zero. So U prime, V prime is not deterministic with respect to U and V. So to determine R6 with condition in R4, it's natural to apply I and mean, introduce the two free, 
two dimensional free parameter, say omega in S2. So if we write u prime v prime in, term, in terms of this way, is always satisfy momentum conservation and energy conservation. Why we have these kinds of uh, free parameter is that because even though we have two same velocity u and v, it's natural to consider just relative direction of two centers. This relative direction of two centers are ignored when you consider zero size. So it is very natural to S. So this guy, in fact, means relative position of two center, right? So all in all, we have to consider all the kinds of this collisions. That means we have to integrate with respect to omega in or in S2. So now this is the standard, the nonlinear quadratic operator Q of F and F, which is written by integration of S2, and which is integration with respect to U. That means say T and X is given, and let's consider variable on the left-hand side is V. Then we have consider when V is fixed, V is fixed, we have consider all the particle U in R3. And we have to consider all the relative position of two centers in S2. So it is natural to integrate omega in S2 in U in R3. And uh, away from this corner, let me tell you about why this looks like this guy. So this is usually uh, written by gain. So this is gain. And the second guy is loss. That says, once we, once we measure how many collisions happens between U prime and V prime. So if you read this guy, a reversing direction, if you consider U prime, V prime, and we get U and V. So whenever collision between U prime and V prime happens, we get V. So this is why we call this guy gain. And whenever we, we see collision between U and V happens, and after collision, V particle disappear. So we call this guy loss. And this is a corner depending on the, their collision angle. So in this way, this is just count how many particles we get minus how many particles we lose. Okay, so this is the uh, simple interpretation of a Boltzmann operator. Uh, for the Boltzmann equation, many people's main interest is to show the global regularity and showing that this the solution converges to global equilibrium as we expect in statistical physics. Then when mass momentum energy is normalized, it's a widely it's a standard to assume the global Maxwellian, this guy, which is called Gaussian. And in particular, the, when you, in the state of Gaussian, the Q of mu and mu becomes zero by simple energy conservation. That says when we are in the Maxwellian state, their uh, binary collision does not affect any propagation of a probability density function. Any questions for this model? Okay, but I'm mainly interested on the boundary problem of the Boltzmann equation. So there are many boundary conditions, but let me, let me introduce the two most famous boundary conditions. So assume the above is domain and this is outside. Uh, the way of understanding the boundary condition in a kinetic theory is that assume we are standing on the boundary. And we give, we get information 
say F from all these directions, right? Outgoing. The thing is, for the Boltzmann equation, uh, for the kinetic theory and the boundary condition, the boundary condition must assess how we give the information inside using the information we get. That means this is we get outgoing information. This is what we get on X, but and we have to cook up this data and give it to the inside. So this is what uh, data we give to the inside, and this is data we get from the inside. So diffuse reflection was motivate, motivated by heat model, and we gain the, all the normal flux, and we combine all the normal flux and give to those information to the inside with the Gaussian profile. And this is very a red physical model. And more mathematical ideal model is that We assume just uh, every information behaves like a billiard mode. That means we are on the boundary. And once we get the data from this way, and it's like billiard, we just give the data to this way. It's billiard. So where R is just the reflection operator. In the aspect of understanding the spectral reflection is, uh, I think, is easier to understand. But uh, in terms of research, I think a spectral reflection is much harder than diffuse reflection in general. Not, not in not all research, but I think the spectral reflection is it's a little bit tricky. So let's see this brief history history about. Uh, some research about in boundary problems. The first about uh, four years years ago, the Shijita Asano says that global regularity and decay to Maxwellian in the complex domain, but they didn't provide any full proof. Of course, there are many works, including renormalization solution and so on. But I want to mention that. As you all know, so Devila and Villani says almost exponential decay to large and large data, large data solution on the assumption of a priori subtle bound. They didn't provide repulsiveness, but they assume that if we have a, just a large, large data solution with a smooth, smooth large data solution, it must converge to uh, global max value. And also they this, uh, this research also covers some boundary problems, but anyway, uh, this paper itself does not provide how to get the high regular solution for the boundary problems. For the rigorous boundary uh, repulsiveness, so Yangu Sorg, uh, Yangu introduced uh, after infinity booster argument to construct a low regularity solution for general convex domain, convex domain for spec reflection or just, just smooth for diffuse. When initial, perturb initial perturbation is very small near Maxwell. Uh, also, I want to mention some good work by Mark Bryan. He says, instead of filling all the vacuum in the convex domain with spec reflection boundary condition. With, uh, this is kind of version I mean, maybe some of experts in this room will know that to show that the work of Villani and De, De Villet, uh, we need a Gaussian low bound. So paying Gaussian low bound of the Boltzmann equation also a very interesting topic, which, which was started by Fulbiranti and so on. And Mark Brand extended those work to the spectral boundary cases. And the Yangos work for Small anything solution was extended to large amplitude data, not large data, but large amplitude. So, anything large, but some LP small. 
say. And with my collaborator, I worked on uh, yeah, this uh, low regular solution to exclude the analytic assumption for spectral reflection in convex domain. So this is just about very low regularity, uh, robustness and trans equilibrium near Maxwellian. Then how about regularity? When the regulate, when the boundary exists, it's known that it's started to know that uh, gaining regularity is very hard. So Google Kim Tonon Treskas in 2017 showed that in convex domain, they obtained the regularity of the Boltzmann equation with singular weighted C1 for both spectral reflection and weight double one P for diffuse. So they even show that it's really hard to get C2 regularity. So this means that uh, restricted regularity for the Boltzmann equation with the boundary condition is its own nature. So this is about convex domain. How about non-convex domain? Non-convex domain, the Kim showed that there can be the propagation of this continuity can happen for the diffuse boundary condition and extend this work in general for diffuse boundary condition, the BV regularity is optimal. I mean, we can expect just the BV regularity. But still, but still uh, regularity of the Boltzmann equation with the spectral reflection with the non-convex domain is open. Non-convex with the spectral is completely open. So this is uh, our question. And this, is, this, this presentation is about this work. So before we solve the problem, let me slightly change the scaling. So F is the probability density function. And if we want to solve the near perturbation problem, it is standard to rewrite capital F as global Maxwellian plus root mu F. This is standard. Instead, since we don't want to show that the solution converges to equilibrium, we just rewrite it this way to make the solution simplify. Then we get free transport with respect to small f. And on the right-hand side, we still not only a quadratic term. So let me. And this gamma over f and f is still not only a quadratic. It looks like just one over root to mu times q of perturbations. And still, because this Gaussian satisfies specular boundary reflection always, we just specular reflection for f, it just changed into specular reflection of small f. So we will just solve this equation and this boundary condition. Okay. And now let's uh, let me explain the definition of our solution. So we consider the Boltzmann equation in exterior regime of a uniformly convex omega uh, complement. That means this is uniform convex and here is our domain. So this is our domain and this is our sign. So we can say that our domain is uniformly non-convex, okay? Under spectral reflection boundary condition. So as far as I know, uh, it's not easy to use high order sober level regularity setup for Boltzmann equation under boundary conditions. So we pursue the regularity of the mild solution. So mild, for mild solution, we use the trajectory we defined before, let's say capital X and capital V and using characteristics and Dohammer principle for, for this scaled equation, we define mild solution in this way. So this is nothing but we first we read in terms of large XS, large VS. When 
small tx is given. And we just integrate the time. Yes. So we get this kind of definition of mild solution. We want to solve the regularity of this mild solution. Okay. And also it's very standard that for this mild solution, when, when zeta is less than one over four, if you give a Gaussian type weight, and then we have local in time regularity. Maybe this must be F naught initial data. So once we see this mild solution, the basic approach will be uh, taking just direct derivatives, capital X, uh, dx dv. And also take, we take dx dv on the right-hand side. So even though, even we assume f is rather smooth, say you will see one or something. The thing is we have to consider derivatives of a capital X and capital V. Then it somehow looks like some F of something times dx dv of large X like large V. So the key is the keys, the key is to understand the uh, behavior of derivatives of our characteristics as follows. So first let's see convex domain first. In the case of convex domain, in the case of convex domain, our character, characteristic is differentiable with some singularity. That means once you define kinetic distance, alpha of xv. Alpha of xv is nothing but the uh, extension to the inside of normal velocity. That means to see is parameterization of a boundary profile. That means we have a boundary domain inside, and this is outside. And this boundary is nothing but C equal to zero. So D C is just normal. So if you consider V here, if V dot D C is somehow looks like a normal velocity. So this is normal velocity. And this is some extension term to make this is well defined in the whole inside of domain. So, so this is just uh, extension of n dot three. Okay, so you can treat every every alpha as n dot three square. That means this looks like n dot three. This looks like n dot three square, and this like n dot three. So this computation says when x comma v are very near grazing, the relatives of capital X and capital V are very singular. Uh, to make this, to, uh, to understand this behavior, if we are inside of domain, this convex, so consider x and v here, this case one, and or consider we are here. X and B. In the case one, small perturbation of X and V, say small perturbation of this guy. The difference of bouncing point is, is not that large, just still small. But when our X comma V is very near grazing regime, small perturbation generate huge difference in bouncing point. By this region, by this region, when, it, when our X and V are very near grazing regime, is the derivatives below that. But still, everything's well defined because 
in our convex domain, uh, we do not consider we are on the boundary when X is inside. When X is inside, inside of omega. Okay. But the thing is, if we are exterior of convex domain, everything is very different. That means we cannot take derivatives to capital X and capital V. This is our domain. And consider this gradient uh, tangential line. And if we consider X and V, it grades exactly. This is huge difference between convex case and non-convex case. For convex case, exact grazing cannot happen because we are inside the boundary. But in the case of each domain of the uniformly convex domain, there can be X and V which graze on X exactly. By this reason, capital X and capital V is not differentiable. So uh, if our domain is uniformly convex one, in the convex, then the optimal regularity we can expect is just C01 half. Why we C01 one half? Because convex domain is somehow locally equivalent to the uh, parabola, say z equal to c x squared plus y squared, right? So this is a local convex profile. So if you consider just uh, inverse function is it, it's not that hard to expect the capital X and capital V is just C to one half. So instead of taking derivatives, what you can do is just uh, making fraction. For two different X V and X bar V bar, we just fraction with beta. Beta will be, will be uh, determined. And taking, uh, I mean, sorry. So, using this uh, mild formulation here, mild formulation, if you take a fraction between x v minus x bar v bar in this way. And then we simply get the beta or the fraction is somehow looks like the fraction of capital X, right? The fraction of capital V with respect to small x, small v. And on the right-hand side, since we added capital X minus capital X bar, this semi norm must looks like this. Still large x minus large x place the, uh, the numerator. And here, uh, there must be some uh, collision corner. I mean, uh, some corner, which looks very complicated, but to simplify, so I just ignore, ignore some, Okay, say some collision corner with uh, weak singularity and good decay. Okay. But the thing is, before we control this semi norm, which looks very complicated, let's focus on these two things fraction over capital X and fraction of capital V. By previous observation that capital X and capital V must belong to C0 one half. What you can expect is zeta must be two beta, right? Because these two guys belongs to C0 one half. So our choice will be zeta will be two beta. Our main idea is a local to no local iteration. So our idea is that once we can control these two semi-norm, jx, jv uniformly, 
uniform estimate of these two guys will give uniform estimate of this regularity of small f, right? Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, my slide has some disorder because uh, when you have uh, no linear terms, I mean, this lemma explains, in fact, the difference between a fraction between two gamma, in fact, it looks like at infinity times somehow looks like, uh, somehow looks like K times derivatives of F and also fraction with respect to X also looks like at infinity times K times derivatives of F. So what, uh, the reason we made this estimate is that uh, this nearly looks like a linearized Boltzmann operator. So where K is, looks like this very complicated, but this is what I told you just before, weak singularity and good decay. And just both from the K is nothing but we just changed V to V bar and we just symmetrized. In fact, this K comes from linearized Boltzmann operator. So when you uh, rewrite capital F as near maximum perturbation, it's natural to obtain the linearized operator of Q in this way. And uh, this operator is so well studied before. And this looks like an integral operator with a corner, very good corner, KC. So what this pre previous lemma says, even though we have somehow fraction of nonlinear terms, it, it can be treated as a, uh, linearized operator with the derivatives inside, okay? And this is why I just wrote, I just wrote, I just wrote in this way, instead, in fact, instead this is KC, okay? And this is also integration of world form KC. But to simplify, let's ignore KC because KC is very good. Okay, then how do we perform the uniform estimate of semi norm JX or JF? So, for example, let's try to do some JX. For the <clears throat> fraction estimated before, we also multiply k, I mean, say just one with some cutoff, and we also perform some integration with re respect to velocity. <clears throat> and then what you get, j over x is controlled by some good terms. So what I'm saying, good term is, is nothing but it's very re related to some initial data, right? And this was, uh, there was no disintegration before, but to make the left-hand side as J of X, we added this integration. We added this integration. Okay. <clears throat> and previous it was the theta, two beta and this beta, but now let's choose beta to be two beta. So we just same two beta here. And similar for capital V, you also get two beta here. Then we are, then it's a little bit, uh, uh, it's a little bit hopeful because on the left-hand side, we have JX and right-hand side, we have JX, JV. We can make a very similar estimate for JV, which is controlled by some good terms, plus time integration, velocity integration, fraction two beta times JX and similar terms. JV. So by adding these two things, we can control JX plus JV, maybe. So from this non -local, to, uh, local to non local iteration form, our main estimate is to how to get, how to get this guy. This is uh, our main interest. Uh, because capital X is not differentiable, 
to beta must be less than one. I mean, okay, just let's just uh, just choose two beta. And we have to perform, we have to perform optimal beta such that uh, velocity derivatives of the fraction of capital X is integrable. But let's go back to the natural behavior of derivatives. Since capital X is not differentiable, our only hope is to rewrite fraction, fraction over X as, which is to rewrite this guy as integration of derivatives. Of course, you can ask me, oh, you said the capital X is not differentiable, but why you are saying that this guy is differentiable? And that is because this picture. Uh, consider that we have, say, capital uh, just X and X bar here. And capital X is not differentiable only at this point, only at this point. Away from this, say, X and V, in this region and in this region, capital X is differentiable. Not differentiable only at this point. So our strategy is to rewrite the fraction as the integration of derivatives. But we know that derivatives of capital X and V somehow looks like a normal velocity as we saw before when I introduced the behavior of some domain. Although this is complex, but uh, in general for, in general, in general, all this, the lower bound somehow looks like uh, n dot v. Then this is what we have to do, right? But this direct approach doesn't work very well because of uh, the main reason is that we are playing with the 3D, not, not 2D. So we have to introduce two very important idea. The one thing is shift, one thing is shift. Again, let's choose X and X bar. And the, the simplest parameterization is this guy. Simplest parameterization is this guy. But if we move along this direction, along this direction, X tau say, then this local profile, somehow this looks like yc x squared, right? Local profile is somehow slided. It is not uh, perpendicular. So this, this causes very crucial effect of uh, uh, convexity. So to make our, to make, uh, to make, to consider this convex geometric effect, properly, we just move, we just move X bar into new position X tilde, this is shift. So instead of parameterization this guy, we don't, we don't parameter this guy, but instead we parameterize this guy. If we parameterize this guy, and then we can exactly uh, find this, the key of a uh, convex structure. Okay, and this is why we introduced shift. It is similar for V. Let's consider, uh, just please just ignore just theta here to simplify. If we have V here and V bar here, the simplest parameterization is just a linear one. But if we move along this simple linearized parameterization, it's hard to feel the sharp effect of convex domain here. So to make it correct, we shift. That means we normalize the size of V into the same as just V. So V tilde has same direction as V bar and same size, same modulus with V. This is our uh, shift argument. So defining the new parameterization is a little bit tricky, but this idea is, is rather simple. 
Okay, so simply speaking, uh, this is not sharp, not sharp, and this is not sharp. So instead, we have introduced the shifted parameter, uh, parameterization. And also, okay, now let's say that this void point X is shifted parameterization. The shifted V is, board font V is shifted parameterization. And since we are treating, since we are treating 3D, not 2D, we have to define, I mean, this is, uh, we, we found this quantity magically by luck. Uh, we decided to call this spectral singularity. So again, as I told you, the derivatives of capital X and V looks like a V dot N. That means V dot, V dot N. If we are inside of 2D, everything will be fine, but we are, uh, we are playing in the three-dimensional domain. So the thing is, the, the thing is, okay, let's see that <clears throat> this is cross-section. This is cross-section omega and S, which is spanned by our V and X minus X bar. That means if we are three-dimensional convex domain here and using <clears throat> position and velocity, we make uh, some plane then we will get some cross-section, this guy. And this is our picture. But the thing is, if this plane is just middle of this convex domain, this is good. But what if this plane is very near the edge of the domain? That means if we are, domain is here, but if our plane is very near the edge of the domain, the size, or that means this curvature, this curvature is so very different between these two cases. This is a difficulty of a three dimensional one, not 2D. So because of the, this effect, because of this effect, the dress computation of N that V doesn't work, but we have to consider just three dimensional effect, which is done by and the V over X dot dot N. And similarly, for, for the last part, V dot N divided by V dot hat dot N also divided by TB, which is a uh, uh, traveling time from X to its first backward bounds. These two denominator comes from three effect. And now with these two spectral singularity, which is uh, it's very hard to find, we can make a, but, uh, through a long computation, we can find the ODE of <clears throat> this SSP and S velocity. SSP and S velocity also satisfy these two ODE. Uh, in fact, this done by just a uh, very complicated vector computation. And by com we, we take a, a direct derivatives, a, we use convexity and we decom decompose velocity into modified parameterization direction and it should, it's perpendicular direction. And then we get the lower bound this guy. This is just a, a trick and long computation. And then, there will be uh, integration uh, with, with respect to the parameter of our shifted parameterization will give some, it looks like uh, one dot three at some point, at some point. And after consider uh, every cases, our final estimate will give in any cases, in any cases, its fraction can be controlled by one over n dot three n is to end point. X and X tilde. Of course, X tilde is, is not X, it's not X bar, two are different, but if you see the way of performing shift, if you see way of performing shift, and the V, okay, uh, 
uh, if you consider this domain, x bar was shifted x tilde, but end up v is same because x tilde comma v and x bar comma v share the same trajectory line as a set, okay? And this is why we can control fraction as end of v of two end point. So we can rewrite this guy as just x bar. And from the uh, no lo local to no local term, what you have to do is integration of this two beta and integration, which looks like this. And to beta, in fact, there's some corner kc. So because, because, uh, because of this uh, end of v effect, if you choose the uh, integrability near singularity, to beta must be less than one. So we get beta is less than one half. And also we know that since regularity of capital X and V is one half, this looks nearly optimal. This one half regularity looks optimal. So all in all, uh, considering everything, we obtain, you obtain semi norm estimate. So, so this is this H was in fact, what we wrote as Jx, this was in fact J of V. We have a uniform estimate of this guy with some initial data F with the C02 beta. F0 is C02 beta. Okay. Uh, beta V and X. Okay. So get uniform estimate for the semi norm. And using the semi norm, you finally obtain. Uh, okay. So this is just a. Uh, Technical part which says the C one half regularity of X and V. Let's skip that. So this is our final main theorem. Uh, this guy is uh, introduced to guarantee the local regularity. And once we have F zero belongs to C zero two beta, both in X and V, and then our local solution says by Helder regularity with the index beta, in this pattern. Okay. Our solution has weighted C0 beta regularity. Okay, thank you.